Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to be talking about Star Wars. Well, Episode 4, A New Hope. I've said it before, I'm born in 1971, this movie falls right into one of the amazing experiences I had as a kid, and it's weird that I have to call it episode 4, A New Hope. There was a time when you didn't have to, but I'm glad there's more movies, and I did a podcast, uh, Surface Thoughts on The Rise of Skywalker, which I've grown to dislike even more. Now I'm going to go back to the beginning. For me, and uh, the franchise, maybe not chronologically, and its storyline. Star Wars, for me, is a, like I said, an amazing experience. Just at the right time, I'm six, seven years old, eight years old, and the, it came back out. I think they released it. When you look back and you go into the little nuts and bolts of how it was made, it's almost surprising that it is as good as it is. And it has flaws. It's not a perfect movie, especially now looking back at it. But it's a definitely a really good movie that has a great story, and it's captivating, especially when you're a child. And even looking back as an adult, I see some of the the mixture of the tones and the, some of the themes that are in there, and you could understand and respect what they were going for. As I grew up with this movie, going back to it was always a joy, although I'll admit, I think, arguably, The Empire Strikes Back is the best movie of the Star Wars franchise, and I do really like Return of the Jedi. You watch this and you gotta go right into the second movie, and but everything starts here, you know, the opening scene, you're going on to uh, certain points of view that they use and it becomes part of the the character of the franchise. Um, certain angle, planet, a big ship, smaller ship. Uh, you know, first you see the small ship and the big one's chasing it. Just right away draws you in. I think it's a genius idea to put the crawl or whatever they call it in the beginning where it, it tells you a little bit what's going on. Uh, which, okay, might not be so unique, and maybe it was done back in the day, but it seemed to fit. And there's also a story that he, George Lucas got in trouble for that, and got, I don't know, threatened to be thrown out of the Director's Guild, and he wanted nothing in the beginning of the movie, go right into the crawl, into the scene, when... I guess the standard and the well, rule of law was you had to have stars, actors, producers, and whatever the formula was, or that there's some agreement. And like I said, you look at the nuts and bolts of this, and you come back with hindsight, and you look, it seems George Lucas couldn't get out of his way. It happened to be um, people around him that really made the movie shine. Uh you know, you could read things if you believe them or not, and some are in books that are, I guess, pretty much uh, respected in, you know, what is hearsay and whatnot. That he, his cuts were horrible. That when he tried to get this movie done, it took a group of people with all different types of talent to make it work. And you look back, Mark Hamill, awesome love him although he didn't get the star roles that came afterwards and his fame let's say is the voice of the joker and for more of his voice acting harrison ford i mean just what can you say we know he's probably one of the better actors that's come across our screens carrie fisher same with mark hamill except maybe a little bit more she's had a little bit more notoriety been in bigger movies been a focal point here and there. And you had some classics in there. Peter Cushing, Alec Guinness. You've got droids introduced right away. And also um, the princess. The story 
to me differentiates from my love of Star Trek. So to me, Star Wars is that um, it's that fantasy. It's that wonder of the hero's journey. Uh, and I could admit, I think in the later years, I leaned more towards Luke. But when I was first saw it, I didn't care who who I played. As long as I had the blaster, uh, I was Han Solo or Luke. I think growing older into the role playing games and learning about the systems that they governed that were they were governed under, I I was really more in depth into the Jedi aspect of things. But that's neither here nor there with this. Because I'm young, I see the movie, it captivates me. The toys was genius. The whole branding of it was just a special time in history, especially considering um, movies like Jaws and, um, well, for me, I mean, Jaws is one of the best movies that is, I've, I've ever seen. Looking back to some of the classics that I've looked at for screenwriting, for script writing ideas, and just to see how it's done, I try to be understanding of, you know, what is laid out before me, what I like and don't like. So there are some classic movies that people like that I fucking can't stand. But I try to say, okay, I know why people like it, and it's uh, finally made film is not for me, that type of thing. And I do agree with some people that, there's a difference. You could be subjective talking about your opinions, and that's probably the better way to go, like why I like this and whatever. But to stay to state why a movie's bad, you have to be pretty good at it. There are people on the internet you could look at uh that do it really well. Um and they can get their points across and they could show you objectively why it's a bad movie, not why you don't you like it, that's fine. So there's that difference. I think looking back at Star Wars, the original, 1977, I think you can look back at it and say it's a good movie um, with some great characters, and the vision was, um, you know, almost one of a kind. And even though George Lucas had borrowed stuff, I understand that aspect. To put it all together and have this vision... And he made it happen. He's got the first three movies. We'll get to those in time. But just the time that this was in, the experience of a child watching the movie, revisiting it. At the time, I was a big... I loved to read when I was a kid. My mom, thank you for getting me into that. The um, aspect of... uh, reading the books. And at the time, I think there was only... What was it? Uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye came out, and there was Han Solo's Revenge, and I think that came out after Empire Strikes Back. But anything I can get my hand on, and this is the difference also with Star Trek. For me, Star Trek is the bright future where we can get over things, and this is what our society might look like. And Star Wars is just that fantasy world that you enter where... There's magic in a sense with the force and smugglers and princesses. It just it's got that fantasy sci-fi feel. And to me, my love of Star Trek comes from a different place, I think. Even though I think Star Trek would probably be first under my radar. Memory is a tricky thing, but you know, however old I am, I was definitely well most likely um ex- exposed to Star Trek on TV as reruns before I was six. So, yeah, I'm not saying I absorbed it and took it in, but there's just that distinction between my love of Star Trek, my love of Star Wars, and how it's fucking uh, being sullied. Everybody knows what most people do with Red Letter Media. One of the quote means that are going around is a clip of them. I think it's Rich Evans says, uh, how does it feel to be old enough to watch all your favorite franchises be destroyed. And he's like, and uh, I think his name is Mike, is like, oh, it feels great. I'm getting that feeling these days. But, uh, you know, I try to be level-headed and say, all right, maybe it's not my Star Wars. Uh, You know, it's a different age. I'm getting older. And we're talking about the original Star Wars, 1977, the experience of the theater, the toys coming out the right age i think 
you could objectively say it's a really good movie. We can piece it up, take it apart, and now we got how many versions of this movie? George Lucas is either a genius or maniac. There are so many versions of it. The edit, the cut, the cleaning up, the editing special effects. They added a Jabba scene in. And I don't mind. I got to be honest. I don't mind. I mean, I mind paying for all the versions. Uh, back in the day, I sort of started to. I just don't. Um, you know, I think, you know what? Maybe I'm a hypocrite because I do agree that I think the Terminator should get a redo. And I don't mean redo the movie remake. I mean, go back to the original Terminator. Redo the special effects with Arnold and the robot. And that movie could be released again. That's how good it is. And as I don't consider it a flaw that when I look back at it, it's just, it's an amazing movie, Terminator. It's always the same way to me. I don't think it needed to be fixed up and seeing some of the graininess, maybe some of the boxes of the ships. Uh, but you know what? It was what he wanted to do to push the technology, whatever his reasons were, George Lucas and Lucas Arts. I guess I'll get to those eventually when I talk about the prequels and the newer movies in more detail. But I, you know, there's that bias, of, of course. Is that Star Wars uh, love, that part of my childhood that is uh, cherished. Um, you look at the archetypes of the characters that are forever branded. And like I said, it might not be unique. And George Lucas borrowed. I guess, you know, we all borrow, uh, if I'm even including myself. In this creative uh, projects that they do, I just see. Looking back, you you could take these little things about the times and the limits of special effects, and we could look back and say, "Oh, these models look better than they do now." And I can agree to a certain aspect, to a certain extent. There are aspects of the special effects that are, blow all that stuff away. But there are certain things that people could talk about that I agree with, like the weight of objects and they're getting better at it. It's nearly perfected now. But when you're looking at what he tried to do with the prequels, I you know, I, I don't fault him. I don't fault the pushing the limits he did and he went in a digital way and uh through his tech and companies he tried to make his vision come true in his own way and I think it was a little bit of a lazy way but we're getting back to 1977 he's young he's you know he's come off I think two movies uh, and his vision he did it and for that I think he gets to get a lot of respect and the accolades he deserves forget about what he's done these days and uh, you know as long as he hasn't you know done any real serious crimes i think star wars is a great movie it, it's made even greater because of my history and my love and my age i i get it i think you can go back and you know find you whatever you want to call them plot holes and your inconsistencies potentially and it only gets better in my opinion i there are aspects of the Return of the Jedi I'll get into that um yeah, they they don't it doesn't age well in a sense, but neither do some of these things in Star Wars. But there's no need for me to say plot I don't do plot holes in this, or I mean plot lines or storylines, or say spoilers or I mean, it's enough and nineteen seventy seven people. It's been a long enough. So there's no need for me to say hey, I recommend this movie. It's 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 part of the culture. I think it's being sullied now, and that'll be where I probably wrap this up because um, starting to do podcasts about a year ago, just trying to fit it into who I am, where you know you got so much stuff going on in your life, and these are things you want to do, you've wanted to do for a long time. So how can I do it where I could just turn on the mic? You know, not as much scripting, which means, okay, not as much um, crafting in that sense, not using a camera, but I want to be able to turn the mic on when I want and 
how I'm feeling about a movie, how I'm feeling about an aspect of my life that's going on. And recently, I look at all these ridiculous excuses they make for the Star Wars movies, and my quick surface thoughts are The Force Awakens is okay movie. It's pretty good. I think certain people shined in that movie. Don't agree with the direction they were going, but it's it's serviceable to reignite the passion for Star Wars, um, especially after the prequels. But after The Force Awakens, we get The Last Jedi, and it's easily the worst movie in all the franchise. And then... Rise of the Skywalker. And I've been doing... Uh, with a friend of mine, I did some trailer reactions. And I did a quick... Um, Rise of Skywalker podcast. And I think the franchise is really hurt. And maybe The Mandalorian will help it. But just like I did with Star Trek when I went through the movies. And uh, just the surface thoughts on the TV shows. Not like season by season. I think it was time to go back and just talk about Star Wars and my love for it. You know, what I really like about it. There's not much I'm going to shit on except for the newer ones. Um, Could you go back and... There have been some great edits on... Well, you find them on YouTube. Where they've done uh, an enhanced Darth Vader Obi-Wan scene. I thought that was pretty cool. And like I said, my need to make it better and look at I, I could appreciate it but i don't need it but maybe someone of a different generation does so there are plenty of versions out there you might find one that's old and a little grainy looking you might see the you know boxes around it and some errors and you might see ones where really cgi looking um job of the hut is talking to han solo because what they did in this scene was they had Han Solo talking to a human who was Jabba. And there's a whole scene they recorded interacting right around the Millennium Falcon, right outside it. And afterwards, they, it being cut and they're making Jabba this big, you know, a fucking slug creature. They digitally put Jabba in over the human. And it's a weird interaction. Now, I think it was cool to do it. It wasn't executed perfectly, but I think it was, in a way, flexing the muscles to try to, you know, George flexing his muscles to try to expand his envision and, you know, make it a little more cleaner and closer to what you, you can envision now. Star Wars will always be a passion of mine to a certain extent. The old ones cannot be tarnished. I don't let the... New ones ruined my experiences, and up to 2000, I don't know, five, I was part of the extended universe, so I read all the books, every single one. I don't think my love of Star Wars will go away, but my interest and my desire to delve back in is definitely waned and almost non-existent. I don't care about some of the shows I would watch on TV that had to do with it. There's not much um, uh, passion for me with the animation. I will admit The Mandalorian gives me a little bit of hope, and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, Star Wars is a special movie to me, and I hope it's a special movie to everybody and gives enjoyment to people. It's something that we should look back on and... We don't have to nitpick it to death. We can love it for its flaws and be honest about the new movies. Uh, I don't like that aspect of, I get it, you know, you get supercharged. I defend the prequels to a certain extent, but I do have a, you know, uh, an understanding of lots of flaws that, 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 that make them up. I don't think that's the case with Star Wars. So I hope everybody's doing good. I'll talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye.